this is the thermodyne tilting turbine taken apart in pieces. These are the pieces you'll be getting. This is a five blade version and you can see these five blades have a flat part and a round part. The round part will go towards the wind and the nuts and bolts to put it together. This is our tail fin with the adjustable flaps. The main body, both pieces are the same. They are reversible. So the top and the bottom are the same. You can put those together. These are the PMA bolts. Much stronger design. The PMA does not use the spacers anymore. It bolts directly to the front, which overlaps. These are the bolts for the carriage. These are the uh, tilting mechanisms. These are the bottom plates that will come in all sizes for inch and a half pipe, two and a half, uh, two inch water pipe, and a 16 millimeter steam pipe, uh, all kinds of metric sizes. Some of the tools we use to put it together, half inch, uh, 9 sixteenths, and uh, I think that's a 19 millimeter. These half inch bolts have a long shank on them so they won't make squeaking sounds like we had in the other video. This piece, which is the main piece, is bent out of one piece of steel. Now it has a split here, but when we put the top cap on it, it will become monolithic. Okay, on the first video I made, I used this bolt, which is threaded right down to the base. And that was going in here. Uh, this piece was going through it. It was making a terrible squeaky sound because these threads completely damaged. You're not supposed to have threads on a part that moves. So what we use is a bolt like this, which is solid. You put a little grease on there, there's no squeaking sound, which I'll show you because it is a, it is, it is a tight fit. Now the first part we're going to put together is this piece. This is not welded, so we need this part to tie it together. This would be for a two inch or a two and a half inch pipe, which would be this size opening. If we wanted to go for inch and a half pipe, we'd use our adapter plate on the top and then bolt it together that way. And that's the way we're going to assemble this. Then the other adapter would go on the bottom. And we're going to put that together right now. All right, here's step one of the process. The main bracket. This is made out of nice heavy steel. It is not welded together. So you have this crack here. You basically have to bind it together. If this crack is unequal, you have to assemble this on a pipe. That's one of the things you'll have to do is actually assemble it on a pipe. Wall, while the top half is coming together. Now these plates, fit two directions. If you got it on the right way, the distance from here to here will be equal. If you turn it the wrong way, this side is flush, this side sticks out about an eighth of an inch. Okay, it won't fit that way. You gotta fit on that way where this side is flush. Okay, this is the adapter for one and a half inch water pipe. You don't need it if you're gonna use two and a half. You can just bolt the top piece on like this if you're going to use two and a half inch pipe. Now the open side fits to the open side. Don't turn it like this. It goes like this. If you want to use inch and a half pipe, use the adapter plate. Now I'm feeling this here. This is equal. That means the plate is on the right direction. I'm going to put on the top plate and we're going to proceed to bolt it on. Now. You want to put these bolts going upward, otherwise you'll run into interference on these tilt bolts. 
you'll put in later. I'll just show you hand. This has to be hand tightened. And everything's put together with locking nuts. This top brace here actually keeps it from sliding down the pole. Be very sure you put these bolts upward. Do not put them downward. Because if you put them downward, they're going to run interference with these bolts later on. So this is made out of very heavy material. We're using very heavy bolts. Now the nice part about these plates are if they wear out or you want ever want to change to a different pipe size, you can just bolt on new ones. If they do wear out, you can double these up or triple these up and just keep adding plates or change them out. This is a rebuildable design, so you don't have to throw away the entire bracket. Since this is an inch and a half version, we're going to put on the bottom plate. You got to get the orientation correct. That is the correct direction. If these bolts don't fit in, turn the plate 90 degrees and it'll fit. to start the main assembly. All right, the best way to do this is to lay this plate down. None of these bolts are tight yet. Uh, this is the main pivot point, which we're gonna use these big screws for that have the long shanks. Uh, so they're gonna be able to be oiled and, and be a tight fit. Okay, now you put a washer here do not forget this washer. It is really important. Now you put the top plate over it. And then you push that bolt down through there. And there's, these are kind of long threads, but they've got to be because we need that three-quarter of an inch shank on there. So we're going to snug that up. Next we're going to put in... Oh, we forgot a piece. We forgot to put this one on. <laughs> yeah, you can forget a lot of pieces. Okay, this is our main plate. Put it on. And then push the main bolt through. And we tighten and then we'll worry about getting it real tight later. We could do these right now, which bolts this heavy quarter inch plate and makes it basically one piece with the sheet metal body. It's a strong point to kind of pull it all together. Again, you don't want to forget that washer in there. That's real important. Oh, 
Okay, next we're going to do the guide plate. This is a, a pin and roller which guides the turbine from going up and down and gives it some support. Now we got to put a washer underneath here and a nut. All these nuts are nylon lock nuts. Now again, we just want to snug this up because we don't want to make it tight. If we make this tight right now or this this tight or this tight right now, this is going to probably bind. So we want to be in an upright position when we do all this. And right now we're going to flip it over and go to the other side. Do the same thing on this side. Now these overlap. And the PMA can go either direction. It can overlap to the top or to the bottom. We're remembering to put that washer down there. That's real important because we don't want this body to rub up on this surface. So it needs a little bit of spacing. And these are going to overlap. They can go left to right or right to left. It doesn't matter. It's only very thin metal. Okay. We got to put our... This is... We always forget to do this. Uh, we forgot to put our main plate on there, which is a common error. You're going to probably forget to do this sometimes. You got to take it apart and kind of start over. So it's like putting together a barbecue. You get it half put together and you got to take it apart again because you forgot some piece. bolt the quarter inch slide plate to the main body and we're just going to snug that up loosely now we don't have washers on that particular part doesn't need them this is a pretty tight fit Got a spacer plate in there. Now this is just not a bolt. This is a bolt and a spacer plate. The spacer spins. Don't forget the spacer. Okay, now we're gonna just put one of the tail bolts on. These are elongated slots. Since the front, we don't know if it's going to be left overlapping right. We've got elongated slots here, so it's always going to be correct. We're just going to put a tail bolt in here just to kind of hold it together. Now we're going to put it up on our stand. And this is our stand. And this just kind of holds it all together while we're assembling more of it. Okay, the next part is to put the PMA onto the front of the cowling. So this is a two and a half inch bolt, inch and a half bolt. And we're gonna make sure the PMA wires are facing upward. That way it makes a nice long loop to go down into the electrical hole. If you've got a DC PMA, you want to make sure the positive is up. All right, so let's go ahead and assemble this. We're going to put in the bolts in this direction so we don't have too much sticking out here. The PMA will go on. Remember, we got the wire sticking up because we want it to make a nice loop. When this thing tilts, the wire needs to go somewhere and it needs to make a nice loop back to that hole. And this is the first official tightening we're going to do as far as parts. All the rest of these are still loose.
that's it. All right, now this thing is tilting in a nice fashion. There's nothing rubbing. So we're going to go tighten all these parts bit by bit. And before we get them too tight, we're going to go back around to this side and tighten a little. Next we'll do these. back around here make sure this is all it's all still tilting easily okay we'll tighten Still a little bit loose. Now we're going to do this one. We know it's still tilting, so we're going to go ahead and tighten this one while everything's still kind of loose. put this little spring retainer on here to hold the spring. Again, it's easy to be putting this together and forget all these little intricate parts you need to make it all work. Right, we're doing the left side now. Or right side, depending on how you're looking at it. That's why we assemble all this on the pole, so we get nothing binding up. Okay, now we're going to do the big bolts. That takes a lot of wrenching. Now we have a real tight interference problem up here in this area. So what we have to do is tighten the top bolt first. And we're going to reach all the way through here with a wrench, grab it and tighten it. You could actually do this before you put the PMA on. Uh, that would probably make that job easier from the other side. Now there's these little zinc plated spacers. They're going to go on to the uh, they're going to go on to the adjustment cams. They also go on right here over these 3 8 bolts. I just wanted to give you a look at them. This is the cam spring tensioner mechanism. We're going to show you how to put this together and which hole it goes into. With the spacer, it goes in the top hole. We put a washer in there to guard against sheet metal fatigue. And we're 
going to tighten this, but not too tight. We want to be able to rotate it just a little. All right, this is the spring mechanism. We're going to show you how this goes on. Make sure you hook it in, in the bottom from the back forward and give the spring a twist and just hook it on right like that. And once it's on, uh, you can tighten up this mechanism. All these different positions are for tighter spring tensions. You would just rotate this whole cam around and choose holes that are, like if you choose this hole, it would obviously be down here at the bottom somewhere, so this whole thing would rotate. Okay, we're going to put in the other spring and other cam. you put a washer back here it's very important This is tilting nice and easily. Uh, we're gonna do the final tightening of the main bolts. tight but not too tight in other words if they're so tight that this doesn't pivot anymore see now this one it's not popping back up we have to loosen them a little bit just a touch so they gotta be perfect just that tight and then we're gonna do the other one So it's tight, but it still springs up all by itself, which is what we want. Perfect. Now for the tail. These are the uh, nuts, bolts, and washers for the tail. There's four washers. Please use them. It'll stop metal fatigue and make everything a lot stronger. You gotta spread this. Now there's a bunch of holes here. We're gonna use the middle holes. on both sides. 
Lost a nut. <laughs> This is going to be tail heavy because we have no hub on it yet. Okay, this is the hub which is going to go on to the PMA. The PMA shaft will receive a spacer, but before we can put the hub on here, we've got to pre prep the hub with the bolts. So we're going to pre thread all the bolts into the hub and put a nut on them because once we get it on here there's not going to be enough room to reach a long bolt like this through here so we're going to pre-thread this all this is a five blader so we're going to skip every other set of holes Now these bolts are carriage bolts, so they have a square lock in the back, so we're not going to need to hold the back with any type of a wrench. They're going to be held in by the carriage bolt squares. Okay, now that that's done, we can put that on looks kind of wonky right now but don't worry it'll all take shape soon we put in the washer and the nut hold everything in place we're not going to tighten it yet till we get the blades on but let's start putting the blades on now the blades will look like this now there's a flat side and round side don't look down here at the base because everything looks the same to find the flat side and the round side, you will have to look this direction. You can see that this is the flat side, where my thumb is, and this is the round side. That's how you tell the round side or a flat side of a blade, by looking down the blade. Flat side must face the wind, so this is going to go like that. So the flat side is going to face the wind. The round side faces the tail or the PMA. Okay. These don't need washers because you are not going to tighten these a lot. You want to put minimal pressure on these. We're going to use a impact wrench, but we're going to go real easy. That's it. That's as tight as you want them. As soon as they start getting snug. The rest of it we're going to do by hand. Okay, now the rest of the tightening we're going to do by hand. We're not going to do it with the impact. So we're actually going to use the impact wrench and spin a little. And that's tight enough. And then spin a little just so it's, yeah, it's snug. That's all we want. If we put too much pressure here, we're going to fatigue this plastic. And it does not take a lot of pressure to keep this on here. So just five, six pounds of pressure. That's all. And we're going to keep going. Okay, we finally got all the blades tightened on. And now we're going to tighten on the center nut with an impact wrench. This is the best way to do this. And that's 
it. And now we have a working tilting wind turbine. Now this has a number 14 spring on here so it's a little light. This is for a three blader but this will kind of show you the action. And when there's wind pressure up here it actually comes down nice and gentle because you got the pressure of the wind up there. So that's it. That's how you assemble a tilting wind turbine. Give you one last look in here. One of the nice parts about this is the roller kit fits right on there without any need for a roller plate. Now we have a light breeze coming through here and it's already it's five miles an hour and it's already starting to adjust. And the plates are starting to spin and we don't want this to happen in the doorway of the shop but it rolls really smooth. This is a new item. These are tail extensions and these are for when you need better steering and also you have more blades on the front. These come in 12 inch, 14 inch and 16 inch and they'll bolt on just like this. And they just extend the tail out. They're very strong out of very heavy material and they help add weight to the back of the turbine and also give it more leverage for turning in the wind and this is something new we're coming out with the new bracket has enough room to hold all three of our PMA types power core super core which are in the same case the ultra core which is a longer case and the dual core there's plenty of room back here for the bigger PMAs and also for them to tilt. I'll show you that in a second here. Uh, this is the new bracket and frame with the ultra core PMA. You see it's got the wider stator. And those are your clearances. And this would be another reason it changes the weight differential. You got some extra weight here. Why you might want to either use different lengths in tail bars or either reset your spring tension a little tighter. So there's a lot of combinations that can occur here. Three blades, five blades, seven blades, and nine blades. Power core, super core, ultra core, dual core. And each one of these is going to create a different tipping balance for this mechanism. So there's a lot of ways to change when it's going to tilt, how it's going to tilt. And these are just some of the ways we're providing uh, use solution. Now there is a trick to getting these in here once it's been assembled. So if you want to change out a PMA, there's only one way you're going to get it past this maze of bolts. This is how you do it. You put it in flat, so the shaft is facing upward. Then you slide it forward, and then you can go ahead and do the tilt, and tilt it. It's the only way you're going to get it in there. All right, now, to get these bolts in there, you have to put a spacer in back here so you don't get crushing of the uh, two casings together. Kind of a tight fit sometimes. And we do the same thing on the bottom. And this is the spacing with the dual core. 
PMA. Now you want to provide some slack for these wires. We don't have the wire nut in here, but we're just kind of showing you. You have to make a little bit of a wire loop. And when it tilts back, there's plenty of room back there for it. And uh, fits all three PMAs.